So in the next few sections, we'll be discussing a number of specific episodic memory phenomena and looking at how we can provide an account for them, largely in terms of the highest level of description involving uh, cortical columns, but dipping down into deeper levels if necessary. And we'll start by discussing how episodic memory retrievals could shift in their mechanism to being semantic retrievals, if the memory is recalled enough times. And this is particularly significant for understanding the cognitive effects of damage to the hippocampal system. In the high-level model we were using earlier, the pattern of column activation during a novel experience can later be reconstructed using trigger words that directly activate auditory columns. And these auditory columns have recommendation strengths in favor of indirect activation of visual columns on the basis of frequent past simultaneous activity. These relatively simple columns can drive detections of more complex receptive fields. These more complex receptive fields can drive activation of other columns on the basis of past simultaneous receptive field expansion. That leads to an active column population that tends to include columns active during one specific past receptive field expansion episode. Columns activated in this way uh, can drive activations at the next level of complexity, followed by another indirect activation stage, eventually ending up with a population with a fair amount of overlap with the original experience population. Okay, but if the memory is often recalled, the original auditory columns that seed the recall are often active just before the columns that are the memory recall. So the auditory columns could acquire recommendation strengths in favor of indirect activation of the memory recall columns on the basis of frequent past activity just after the auditory column activity. So if a memory is often recalled, the mechanism for recall can gradually shift from simultaneous past receptive field expansion to frequent past simultaneous activity. In other words, the cortical area supporting the indirect activation will change from one of the hippocampal cortices, the parahippocampal cortex perhaps, to an area such as the left inferior frontal gyrus. Hence, as we observe, damage to the hippocampal system sometimes removes the ability to recall relatively recent events, while leaving recall of more distant events intact. But note that the information content of the event memory is recorded at the time of the event in a range of cortical areas, and it doesn't move. There's no consolidation of the information in some different location over time. The only thing that moves is the location of the pointers to that information, from the hippocampal system to areas supporting semantic memory retrievals, which are probably in the left inferior frontal gyrus. 